All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Jan. I do hope you're all doing well. Welcome back. Welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I'm actually talking about quite a lot of stuff. Interesting and important stuff. It's all happening quite quickly. Considering football's been cancelled, there's a lot going on. Today I'm going to talk about the recent meeting with the Premier League, what they've said, what that means for the Premier League, and therefore what it means for Chelsea. It actually has serious ramifications for Chelsea, so that's interesting and important. And there is actually some transfer news as well going around the rags that I wanted to talk to you about. Obviously, Pjanic, Jorginho swap is... A big one and also Donnarumma learning English amid uh, apparently a transfer to the Premier League. Mm. So lots to get into but before we do so I want to remind you guys to sub to Football Therapy if you've not already done so because I'm doing videos every single day to help you lot through self-isolation offering you football content and hopefully entertainment so make sure you sub hit the bell notifications icon help me out by liking the video follow me on the socials all right let's get into it so the premier league and the fa and everyone all the big dogs in football had a meeting and they ascertained or well, they came to the conclusion no football will be played before the 30th of april shock horror no one is surprised at that outcome in fact i think everyone's suspecting that that will be extended what the intentions of the premier league the FA are still unknown. So many people have speculated on loads of different outcomes, but at the moment, I think there's a strong intention to actually complete the 1920 campaign and get everything in order so everyone knows where they stand moving forward. And of course, there's loads of finances involved. As things stand, the rules are this current campaign has to be completed before for the 1st of June, but that will be extended indefinitely because of these sort of radical circumstances. But what does that mean for Chelsea Football Club? Well, it means obviously a lot for all clubs, but for example, Chelsea's front three of late, when football was still being played, and boy does that seem a long time ago now, and it wasn't even a long time ago. Chelsea were playing the front three of Willian, Pedro and Giroud. Now, all their contracts are going to be up probably before the Premier League wants to conclude the season and carry on. So that leaves Chelsea in a very difficult, peculiar and actually unique in many ways situation. Certainly in comparison to their rivals at the top part of the Premier League, their entire front three will be gone that they've been playing lately. And also, right, it poses another question. Of course, Chelsea have agreed the transfer of Hakim Ziyech, but does he need to complete football in the area of Izzy? Can he even come and help out Chelsea in this dire time of need where all their senior players will be gone and out of contract? What is going to happen? I, I doubt there will be any sympathy for Chelsea in this situation because, to be honest, loads of people are going to have to make sacrifices and compromises for some sort of conclusion to work. And it is indeed very, very worrying at times for the Blues in terms of concluding and making a success of the 2019. 20 campaigns. Obviously, we're going to have to keep our ears to the ground, see what the Premier League and the FA say. Hopefully, Chelsea will have some players to conclude it, if it's concluded. Anyway, obviously, stop by here every day, and I'll keep you guys updated on that situation. So now, the admin and the formalities of the news update of what the Premier League are doing in terms of the league campaign, let's talk about footballers, right? And let's talk about this story regarding Jorginho and Pjanic, because obviously Pjanic has been playing the Regista role for Sarri's Juventus, and it doesn't come as a surprise that eventually the links of Jorginho to Juventus would happen. Well, they came immediately as soon as Sarri went, but they've come back and there is speculation that perhaps Frank Lampard can play Billy Gilmore in the Jorginho role, Mateo Kovacic in the Jorginho role, and, you know, perhaps if there is a deal there to be struck for some money and maybe Pat Pjanic, then that could be done. Now, Pjanic is very highly rated. I'm going to put on the screen now two comparisons from who scored from the defensive and offensive kind of metrics. And you can probably see, generally, Jorginho is better defensively than Pjanic and Pjanic is better offensively than Jorginho. Small margins on both sides sides but also kind of different players as well now a lot of people will think differently about this people would be like no i want Jorginho to stay his defensive metrics are pretty good he's 
tries really hard for the team and he's a leader some people will think okay well maybe we should sell him make a decent amount of money for him if Juventus really really want him and some people would probably want Pjanic to come the other way because they see value in another sort of slightly more offensive midfielder do you see what I'm saying we do know Frank Lampard rates Jorginho very very highly but as he sees his squad evolve and perhaps he does see Billy Gilmore playing that role successfully as a starter hey as soon as next season maybe or whenever the football does start again he might genuinely see that with Kovacic as a sort of defensive backup or playing a two-man midfield to accommodate N'Golo Kante and him have so he can play his best work do you see what I mean personally I don't really want to see Jorginho go I want to see Chelsea develop around him I know he still kind of splits opinion even though Stamford Bridge often sings his name but like, yeah, I'm not, I mean, I wouldn't be devastated if Chelsea sold him, but I'd be a little disappointed. But we'll have to see. The Juventus links are going to remain until Sari leaves, I think, probably, because it is the Sari son link still remains. I don't know, Pjanic for me, he's a funny looking dude, man, as well. I know that shouldn't come into it. But I, I just, you no, know, he's not one of those players that you go, oh, I really want Pjanic at Chelsea. You know, I'd ra- if, if, if Jorginho had to go, I'd probably rather try and squeeze loads of dollar out of Juventus so I'm probably gonna say no thank you to the Jorginho Pjanic swap theory gossip rumor deal so (laughs) deals off guys right let's talk about Gianluigi Donnarumma the young talented Italian goalkeeper whose contract runs out at the end of next campaign obviously not re-signing once a big money move and is learning English amid speculation of a Premier League transfer to either Chelsea Football Club or Everton for the price of £47 million. Now, a year or so ago, Donnarumma is rated as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, probably because he was up and coming and he was really, really good and he's like a giant. So you think, oh yeah, really high profile, top tier name, young as well, long term investment, like a much bigger top tier name than Kepa Rita Balaga was. And you think, £47 million. It's not that, that's less than 50. That's a whole three million less than 50, so that's not that much. And he's a big name, and he's a big prospect. Is this a really good deal? But then you think, oh, he's only got one year left on his contract. Probably isn't, you know. Tito Courtois was more highly rated. I think we got, what, 30 million, 35 million? Granted, he was a lot older than Donnarumma, and the market has inflated, so I'm not entirely sure anymore what is a good deal. But on Football Therapy here, I've talked about goalkeepers a whole bunch. I've talked about keeping faith with Kepa, you know, acknowledging he's a very, very talented player, speculating to you guys how it would probably be best for Chelsea Football Club to sign a really competitive number two, rather than, you know, splash out on a number one because Kepa was a huge investment you know someone like a Ramsdale or so someone like that who can be you can come in play really well and if Kepa's form drops off take his spot for the moment and obviously that dynamic and relationship couldn't last forever you need to get to the point where your number one is your number one all the time because you absolutely trust them not to dip form for like four months <laughs> do you see what I mean but that people you hear journalists all the time saying yeah Frank Lampard obviously doesn't rate Kepa yeah he wants Kepa out so yeah I think we'll get a new goalkeeper Chelsea fans are a little bit different they see the good in Kepa and they've seen a lot of uh, great moments from the young Spaniard and maybe that can continue into next season it would but it does I mean he could just go to Everton but would Everton pay 47 million I mean to be honest I if I was Everton the club I would replace Jordan Pickford I know he's England's number one but he's been so so shaky of late he pulls off these amazing saves every now and again and he's got good distribution it's not enough it's not enough in the Premier League in the Premier League you need consistency in terms of saves um, and he was like second to bottom just above Kepa, I think, maybe. And obviously we know Kepa had a really poor season uh, in goal. So I'd, I'd understand why Everton under Angelotti, remember? Think of the Angelotti attraction for Donna Rummer, 47 million. That, they have got a lot of money, Everton. I can see that happening, him learning English, going to Everton. But behind the scenes at Chelsea Football Club, if Frank Lampard is adamant he wants a new goalkeeper, 47 million for Gianluigi Donnarumma is not bad at all because he's a big, big name with loads of experience at such a young 
age. So it's an interesting one. Again, for me, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be on the fence for this whole video, but much like Jorginho, I'm sort of okay either way. I understand why people think Kepa should be replaced and have lost faith in him because they don't trust him. I personally kind of think that yes, he's talented enough and shown enough. If he can settle into his Chelsea career more long term, he could be good. And perhaps Chelsea should just, you know, start the Caballero replacement should just be a young replacement who can put pressure on slash replace if needs be. If you're in crisis in the middle of the season, another goalkeeping crisis, essentially saying give Kepper another chance, give him a whole season again as number one. If he dips in form again, assess your options the following window. Yeah, dig, but what do you guys think? I'm really interested in getting everyone's thoughts on this because it's a, it's a really tricky one, man. Let me know your thoughts on everything I've spoken about in the video, in fact, about Chelsea's front three of Willian, Pedro and Giroud's contracts uh, expiring before Chelsea might get the chance to conclude the season. What would you do? Would you give them all 12 month extensions? Obviously, Willian wouldn't accept that. Would you, what's gonna happen? Let me know about that. What's your opinion on the Jorginho Pjanic situation? How do you feel about both players? Let me know that down in the comment section below. And obviously, express yourselves on the goalkeeping situation. I'm always keen on getting your thoughts on that as well. I'll be down in the comment section below. So write your thoughts down there. And if you have enjoyed the content I've provided you today, it would mean a lot to me if you could like the video. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit that bell notifications icon because it's important. You're also welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. You lot enjoy the football that is not happening at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.